Hello, thank you for stopping by. I'm so glad you're here. In this video, I decided I would switch things up a bit and do more of a vlog chat style where I just talk about what's going on in my sewing life, what sort of projects I have in the process, uh, that sort of thing. Uh, someone mentioned this in the comments of my sewing room organization video. I think their name was Karina, thank you Karina, to check out something called Friday Sews, which I hadn't seen before and it was very interesting. A lot of, a lot of uh, really cool videos with that tag. So I thought I might try that uh, so I can get some more videos more frequently. Uh, my big videos usually take quite a bit of work when I'm making a project and filming it and then I spend a lot of time editing. So this will be a less edited, like more informal sort of style. Uh, we'll see how it goes. So there are a couple of things going on right now. Number one, I am almost finished with a video making a shirt using a vintage pattern. Um, it's this shirt right here. Uh, not to spoil things, I don't know. And it has this sort of interesting uh, bib front closure to it, which I thought was super strange. Uh, and I am in the process of uh, just finishing up the, like the side seams and the underarm seams with this right now. And then hem hemming it and uh, finishing the buttons on the front. Uh, but uh, it's a whole process that's kind of weird, but uh, you'll see that in the video that's coming out very shortly. Um, but basically we're approaching spring, so I wanted to get a couple of new shirts made for springtime. So I've got that shirt. Um, where did I put the patterns? Right here, up to where the cat couldn't get to them. So I got that shirt that I'm almost finished with using this pattern from I think 1956. And then I am going to make another shirt uh, using this pattern from the 1930s. Using this fabric. So I made a shirt using that pattern in one of my earlier videos. Uh, but I didn't, the process was kind of weird and I actually didn't end up using the shirt that I made in the video. So the shirt that I really, really like, I made off video. So I'm gonna go through that again and make another one because I really do like that pattern. Um, this sort of a like chambray homespun sort of feel to this fabric, but it is the yellow twin of the fabric I made the shirt out of before, uh, but that was in a blue, this one is in a yellow. But they are the same fabric, just different colors. So I'm happy to do that. The thing with that, it has a zipper front closure instead of any buttons or anything on the front, which I thought was weird when I was making it, but I actually really like it in the final product. So to get the zipper closure on that, I bought a big bag of zippers. Um, I don't know when I'll ever use this many. I think these are seven inch zippers, uh, but they came in a giant bag, so I'll have enough. Um, and I had intended to color match with a yellow zipper to the yellow fabric. And then when I got them together, I don't necessarily like the way they look. Uh, this is a very, very like bright, like, uh, I don't know. It's a very, very almost neon yellow. And this is more of an earthy, not earthy, but more of a, I don't know what you'd call it. There's more brown or earth tone in the fabric yellow than there is in the zipper yellow. So I think I'm gonna go with like a contrasting zipper instead. Uh, Cause I've got all these zippers. I don't wanna buy another one. Uh, that's a better yellow. So um, coming up with a few ideas of different zippers to use. Let's see, I don't, let's see if you can see this. So this is the yellow that uh, I don't necessarily like. I, I probably wouldn't be terrible, but uh, we'll see. Here's another one I'm thinking about using. It's sort of a tannish brown, brownish tan sort of color. Um, thought about using just a regular white zipper. Although that one definitely stands out, I think even more than the bright yellow. Uh, could use a gray contrasting zipper, uh, not terrible. Or I could just go for it and use like this like primary blue, which actually does, you see the selvage of this fabric. It does have a, like a navy blue in it. Um, like some of the, the cross threads in this are actually blue. It's kind of an interesting fabric. Um, the blue one I have is the same same fabric, but the uh, cross threads are yellow and the main thread is blue. Uh, so they're kind of a weird fabric, but I like them a lot. 
So that is one of my next projects. After I finish the shirt I have right now with the strange button on the front, I'm gonna make another one of these that uh, has the slide fastener is what they call it in the pattern, uh, the zipper front closure. And then a couple other things that are going on is I've got two uh, new vintage sewing machines coming, uh, which I wasn't expecting really. So what I will do is go to like online auctions and sometimes if I see a machine that just looks cool or interesting, I will put like a lowball bid in for it. So what I did with both of these is I just put the starting bid in and I wouldn't go any higher than that. I do that quite often and I pretty much never win. Like any machine that I think is interesting enough to put a bid on, someone else obviously is gonna bid more than like $8.99 on it. So I did this for two different machines and I got them both. Uh, so I, I, this week I have two different sewing machines coming uh, and I really need to make some space. There are a couple of machines that I like but I don't use a lot. So I wanted to go through videos of those. Just um, there's a Kenmore, I think it's a 1680. Uh, and then there is also like a newer like plastic baby lock machine. Both of them I wanna just uh, donate, get rid of them, you know, donate them to a local charity shop. But I am thinking about, at least with the Kenmore, going through and just making a video of how to thread it, how to use the buttonhole function, things like that, because it's pretty interesting. Uh, I like the Kenmore a lot. It is in the same era as the one that I'm using, but it just has a drop-in bobbin rather than using like the standard class 15 like front-facing bobbins. And I find that I generally don't like the drop-in bobbins as much. Uh, I think Kenmore was sort of experimenting with the bobbins at that time, so... They work great, but you just have to fiddle with the tension more than you do with the Kenmore's with the front facing bobbins. I found the Kenmore's with the front facing bobbins, like I set the tension once and it sews through any like thickness or style of fabric almost without having to adjust anything. They're awesome. Uh, this one can do anything great, the 1680 I think it is. It does everything great, but you just have to adjust the, the tension more often. So it's just a little bit of uh, fiddliness that I don't want to bother with. So I am excited to get the two new machines. I think they're kind of interesting. Um, I would like to go through and make videos of all of my current machines just to have them out there. I've got a Kenmore uh, Model 16 that I've never really made any videos on. It's the one I use for my buttonholes. Uh, I think it's got the best buttonhole function of any that I have, but uh, I have never gone through like the threading and everything in a video. So I'd like to do that. I'd like to get my uh, Singer Model 28 threaded and uh, just play with that a little bit on camera. I think that would be interesting. I'd like to get a foot pedal for my new home sewing machine and use that one a little bit. Uh, that's a little bit of a strange machine for me because I don't necessarily love it as a sewing machine, but it looks cool. So I keep it around. Uh, but then I don't know how much money I want to invest in like putting a foot pedal into it and, you know, fiddling with the tension and everything. Uh, but I don't want to donate it without a foot pedal because it's useless, but I don't want to just throw it in the trash. Um, and I don't want to just buy a foot pedal just to donate it because I'm like, why am I spending, you know, another, another 30 to $50, however much it ends up being, to get a foot pedal for this machine just to give it away. So I don't know what I'm going to do with that one, but uh, maybe I will just get a foot pedal and if I can make a video out of it, I will at least get some value back um, and then I can donate it. Oh, there's one more really interesting thing I have coming. I bought it off eBay. Uh, it's an ultra like hoodie set. So it's basically like a kit. So it comes with all of like the pieces, like the pre-cut um, fabric pieces and the instructions for assembling a hoodie. I think this is from the 80s, so we'll see what it looks like. It's in a big bag. Uh, I know the brand name is Ultra. I don't know anything else. Uh, but I thought it would be interesting to try this like uh, hoodie kit. I think it is a Colorado company, maybe. It seems like ski equipment sort of, or ski clothing sort of stuff, because I saw another, a couple other kits they have. It's a sort of a strange looking hoodie, but I'm going to uh, be putting that together. That's on my to-do list. And then I still do have all of the knit fabric that I made my last hoodie out of, uh, which I want to play around with and maybe, maybe try to make some like homemade dye, like natural dye sort of thing or something like that to dye the fabric and make uh, another something out of it. So that is another fun uh, project I have on my to-do list in my head. Uh, but that gives me a lot of stuff in my head to do going into my spring sewing uh, season. 
Um, so I'm going to start out by getting the things done that I want to get done, which is a couple of new shirts for spring. Then I need to make some room for new machines that are coming in. So I want to go through and make a series of videos going through all of my machines, just so uh, if I decide to donate them, I can donate them uh, with peace of mind, knowing that I at least recorded something about them and then send them on to their next life. So that is all the sewing ramble I have for now. I'm going to edit this video so I can get it up tomorrow for Friday Sews. Uh, this is gonna be a quick turnover video. Then I will finish my shirt that I'm doing, the side seams and the hemming and all that, uh, and then edit that video, which will take me a couple of days at least. Uh, that will be my big project this weekend. And then I'm going to move into my next shirt with this yellow fabric. Um, and that will put me um, all clear for what I really, really wanna get done uh, moving into spring, which is a couple of new shirts. That's all I really want to sew sew for spring is just a couple of new shirts. Uh, but then I have, you know, um, an unlimited supply of ideas for videos. I think I need to make room for more sewing machines. So I need to film some existing machines so I can send them on to their next life uh, with somebody else who might appreciate them. So look for a couple of more vintage sewing machine videos coming up in the near future. And then I'm also going to print out some of those vintage Barbie patterns today, so I will have them ready to go if I want to make a video or two about that. So thank you so much for listening to me ramble. Uh, I hope somebody enjoys this. This is a very much a different style for me. Um, if anybody has any suggestions on what color zipper they think I should use to coordinate with this fabric, please let me know. So we've got the uh, bright lemony yellow, We've got the brownish tan, tannish brown. We've got the white. We've got the gray. And we've got the blue. Um, I gotta say, I the more I think of it, the more I'm leaning towards this blue, which I wasn't expecting. But uh, I think the gray would be pretty good too. Those are my two top favorites right now. But uh, if anyone has any ideas, please let me know. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the future.